welcome to Pure Wrestling Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando, and we're here for another Monday mini-sode. Yes, our Monday mini-episodes are nice, short, little episodes where we get to talk about something specific. But if you like our content, in fact, if you want, I would say, the better content, make sure to check out our longer Wednesday episodes where we have a lot more time to flush out lots of details, give stories, go more in-depth on some items. You can check us out on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, just subscribe. The Wednesday episodes are there as well. You can also catch us on anywhere. There's a podcast. We are a podcast. So iTunes, Spotify, all those places. Uh, But today we're talking about making money on shipping and why it's kind of controversial. uh, Why some people think maybe you shouldn't do it. Why we're going to argue that you can and maybe sometimes should do it and why that is the case. Yeah, I wanted to address this because it, it comes up a lot in our Discord. Uh, it comes up a lot on social media. Like, hey, somebody you know paid for shipping; they overpaid. Like, should I just refund them? And I think Mike and I are agreed. You can tell me if we disagree later on in the in this minisode that you shouldn't. Like, you just shouldn't. And there, and and sometimes, you know, on eBay, if you're a top rated seller, you get a discount. So some sellers give that discount to their buyers to stay competitive. And I disagree with that. I I think you should not. I think whatever, you know, when you, when you sell it and whatever they pay for the shipping, that's it. So let's give some of the reasons why let us know in the comments. Let me, me, I I, I was going to say, I didn't disagree with you at all until you just said that last part. And and that's where I'm going to give you a little bit of pushback on that. Okay. All right. right. Cause you mentioned to stay competitive. They gave the discount to the buyers in order to stay competitive. And if you're doing that long term where you know like, hey, I know these items ship temp- typically 10% less than what the the calculated shipping is coming out to be. If you mark your items off 10% or you're offering 10% coupons, knowing that you're going to make that up in shipping, that might be what it takes to stay competitive. So I, I do think that that's a, a fine process to take. But in the instances where you are maybe making a little bit and you're still competitive enough. Yeah, definitely keep that. All right. So let, let's go with the first one. Yeah. Once somebody buys something and they pay for it, okay, they may overpay. Let's say, you know, they, they bought something and they paid $20 for shipping and it only cost you $12 to ship. Okay. They already agreed to that price, right? You're not, you're not doing any shady, anything shady. You're not doing anything underhanded. They knew upfront what the price was. That was a contract they agreed upon, right? And so if that's the contract, then you're good. You're, you're golden. You weren't like saying, hey, by the way, you know, it's actually 12, but I want you to pay 20. No, you thought it was 20, right? And and listen, if you are trying to be shady and you're trying to up sell your, your shipping, like in time, it's going to, it will catch up with you, right? The competition is going to gonna drive people to other sellers. And so it's, it's not going to help you out. So and back in the day, I remember those days when people on eBay would sell things for a dollar and shipping would be like 80. Well, that's yeah, because to avoid the fees. Yeah. Yeah. To avoid the eBay fees. Like those days are long gone. So to me, it's like, hey, if it's already agreed upon, then that's golden. For example, I, I recently sold the toaster and the shipping was a little bit more. And the 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 buyer was like, hey, you know, can you look into the shipping? Uh, you know, that seems like a little much. And I said, well, this is what was agreed upon. This is what you paid. And, you know, they can choose to cancel. I, I, they chose to cancel. I was happy that they canceled because to me, that just looked like a problem buyer to me. It's like, Hey, somebody really wants something, even if it costs them a little bit extra bucks to ship, they're going to pay that money. So that's number one. Yeah. I think that's a good point. I mean, it's, it's, it's called shipping and handling, right? So there's that aspect of, um, it's, it's not just whatever it costs from the, the post office to ship it. You know, there's other aspects that go in into that price as well. In fact, if you're doing something like, hey, I do free shipping. Well, that doesn't mean that like you tell USPS, hey, I'm shipping this for free. Like you still have to pay. So you're building that into the price. So no matter what the price that it, it you're getting, the amount it costs, the expenses that it costs to get that to the customer is going to be built in at one point, either in the price of the item or in the shipping. And so uh, if you're making a little more, it's just basically like having the price a little bit higher as well. Um, and, and one of the aspects of that is uh, sometimes the materials are going to cost more than expected. So there are times where um, you may you may have the calculated shipping or maybe you do like a uh, like a set shipping. I, a lot of times I'll just guesstimate. I'll say, like, uh, I could probably ship this item for like 
20 bucks. Um, and then sure enough comes out like UPS with the discounts. Hey, I'm able to ship this thing for $12, but I also took a lot more bubble wrap and I had to buy an extra box because I had to Frankenstein it a little bit. And so by the time it's all said and done, it is actually pretty close to, to the 20. Whereas if it was just calculated shipping on that, that might not work out. So building in a little bit extra is going to give you leeway because there's going to be times where hey, you spend a little more, but then there's going to be times where, hey, there's a little bit extra here. Uh, and that that time and the, the, the items that I had to take in order to actually package this, the materials might have cost it more. And so you kind of got to look at it over time. Uh, you make some on some, you lose some on some, and then you're going to hopefully even out over the long term. Yeah, because there's a Listen, I know somebody in the comments will be like, I've never lost money in shipping, right? <laughs> like, I, I always love it when people like say that, you know, it reminds me of a president that always says, I, there's no one that's least studded other than me. It just cracks me up because there's no way that's possible. And so what, what you know, happened to me the other day is uh, I sold something and I ended up losing $5 in shipping because I miscalculated uh, how much it was going to cost. But then somebody in California paid for flat rate shipping and it was cheaper for me to do non-flat rate because it was like, you know, with a city over. And so I gained back those $5. Right. So let's say it was reversed. Let's say, you know, somebody in California, you know, they end up paying for flat rate. And I and I was like, I messaged them I'm like, hey, by the way, it actually was cheaper. You know, I, I'll refund you the five dollars. Then a sale comes in and I lose that five dollars. Well, then I'm <laughs> then then, you know, I'm not able to recoup anything. Yeah. And so what it does is it kind of keeps a balance. Right. Because you'll always win and you'll always lose in shipping because yeah. you, you can't be perfect. And you're right. Like, you know, this is kind of the next part. The materials may cost more than you expected. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, right? I covered that. So, but the, I guess the point though, like uh, going along with what you were saying is if you are selling, if you're really, really niche down, like you're in a niche and um, you're probably going to get repeat buyers, like you sell, I don't know, trading cards and you know that there's going to be people coming back. You've got the Pokemon cards that people are after then it would maybe be a, a smart move to do something like that. Like, hey, I was able to get this to you cheaper. Let me go ahead and refund you some because then you're hooking that that long term buyer there. But if you're just like the the random garage sale store. Yeah, I would say it's probably not as big of a deal um, to say, you know, they're not going to say like, hey, sweet, they're funding me five dollars. I'm going to go back and find a random item on their store to buy. Uh, so y again, you got to kind of figure out, is it a smart business move? Um, and then, like you said, it was an agreed upon price. So it's not like they are ever going to know. That's just more handling. You know, like you you made a little bit more in handling on that item than than on another item where you lose. And I think a lot of people don't think about the materials. I, I, I don't. You know, there's been times where I just sold a goose. I had mentioned that goose as a hustle of the week. And it was a massive goose. It was a duck decoy, but it was like... I don't know what it was. It was like five feet in. No, that's too big. <laughs> it was like three feet in length and like two feet wide. And I had to extra bubble wrap and I had to float it because I didn't want the neck to snap in case the box was dropped. Right. So I had to put a box within a box, which meant more packing materials or something. Now, should I have thought of that ahead of time? I did. I did think about that, but I just didn't realize how fragile the item might have been. Now, as you get better, like you said, as you sell more of a certain niche, like you're going to get better at it. Right. But the reality is sometimes, sometimes you don't know. And I am always a big fan of overpacking than underpacking. Right. So this allows you to overpack without, you know, being at a loss going, man, you know, with bubble wrap, sometimes you don't think about how much that bubble wrap costs. You're like, Oh, well, I paid 35 for it. Right. But it, there could be an item that you spent, you know, 10 or 15 dollars because you spent half of the bubble wrap just trying to make sure that, you know, an item or a multiple part item uh, made it safely. That's good. Now, here's here's the other one. If you do free returns, you will always lose money. Like that's just that's just guaranteed. Right. So if I sell if I sell a shirt, right. And I, I charge four dollars, right, for shipping, right? And it gets to the buyer and the buyer's like, it doesn't fit, and they ship it back to me. Right. They're not it's not like I get to keep the four dollars that they paid for the item to be shipped to them. They get that money back. And on top of that, I'm paying for the item to be shipped back to me. Now that could be an argument against free shipping. I get that. But if you're doing free shipping, 
right? You got to count that loss somewhere, right? You have to figure out that loss. And to me, there's no better way than, you know, at those times where you're able to make money on the shipping, it kind of balances out that loss that you would have taken for a free return. You were saying free shipping, but you you mean free returns there. And yeah. Oh, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Free turns, free returns. Uh, Because I've had that happen multiple times. And uh, this last one, I know we're flying today. This is like our fastest mini-sode. Uh, is the time i know i know there's a thing on isn't there isn't it's still there when you list that you can put how much it costs to handle there there an option there still i can look sure. i should make a listing right yeah. now separate your shipping and your handling fees like itemize it but doesn't that look i think that looks bad right like i don't want somebody going it's going to cost 20 dollars for them to handle it like no like i'm not going to pay that but if you put in the shipping price like you don't think twice about it and uh, somebody had recently messaged me. I, I shipped out two books and, you know, they paid full shipping on both of them, but I gave them a great deal. And even still after the fact, they're like, hey, you know, it seems like you combined the shipping, you know, obviously it cost you less. Like, was there any money left over? And I said, yeah, there was money left over. But the reality is the cost of the materials and the time I spent to pack it offset whatever money I would have made. And then they, they just messaged me and they're like, the books arrived. They're incredible. And that's it. <laughs> Didn't go any further because yeah, time is important. Like we don't think about that as resellers. Sometimes, you know, I've had items sometimes that have taken me an hour. The worst thing I ever sold was that, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like a big camera and larger. Uh, do you remember that thing yeah. that weighed like 80 pounds? And that took me three hours, three hours. Now I sold it for 300 and I paid, I don't know, maybe like 20 bucks for it. So it was worth, it was maybe worth it. The three hours, I guess I spent packing it, but sometimes you get an item that you thought was going to only take you like 10, 15 minutes and it takes you an hour. And by the time you're done, you've lost, you've actually lost, like you haven't made profit. So this is why I encourage you like, Hey, if, if sometimes there's those overages, in the cost of shipping that people pay and it's profitable, it's worth it to you. You know, it's worth it uh, to keep that money. I don't know. What, what do you think on that? What are your thoughts on that one, Mike? Yeah, it's good. I like it. <laughs> Here's the funny thing about this mini. So when I introduced it to Mike, I thought Mike was going to be like, nah, you should, you know, do this. But, and I've done it before. Don't get me wrong. There have been times that I've sold stuff and the pricing was way off of the shipping. And I messaged them back. I'm like, Hey, listen, this, I was able to ship this out for a lot cheaper. Here's 10 bucks. Here's 15 bucks. Here's five bucks. And that does help. It, get, it, it is great customer service, but you just got to think in the, in the long term, is it worth it to you? So hopefully this was helpful to you. If you completely think we're off, we're terrible people, let us know in the comments. We'd like to hear from you. With that being said, it makes you be real. Be relevant. And be reselling. Late. Peace. Peace.